Hello, hello. Hello. Today we are going to study chapter 14. Oh, fantastic. What is chapter 14 about? Mm, in chapter 14, there's a, a sentence in a box. Mm. So we have to figure out where the sentence belongs. Oh, wonderful. It's like a puzzle. Exactly. Fantastic. Okay, then. Are you ready? I am. Is Tutu ready? Oh, my. We have Tutu. Mm. Very good. He's not ready, but we are ready, right? We're ready. Okay, then. Let's get down to business. Mm -hmm. Exercise one. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, make it smaller. So for this, mm -hmm. we have to click all of our boxes. Are we even translation? Everything. Okay. And we can see where we're going to put the sentence. And we'll mm -hmm. talk about why later. Okay. Okay. Okay, we will find the clues, right? Mm hmm. Okay, then. Ready? I'm ready. Mm -hmm. I'm ready too. Are you ready? <laughs> Very good. While you may think of your brain as a product of your genes and mostly unchanging, growing until you reach a certain age and then unaffected by your lifestyle and environment, the reality is that your brain is always in a state of change. In addition to all of the functions your brain orchestrates, it has the ability to clean house, to eliminate connections between brain cells no longer in use. Imagine if your closet could clean itself out, disposing of any clothes you haven't worn in a while, and automatically refilling itself with new clothes based on your changing preferences and desires. That's a lot like what your brain can do. Every second of every day, your brain assesses the connections between brain cells to determine if they have been used in a while. If they haven't, it dismantles them to make room for new connections. If they are in use, it strengthens these connections for future use. Mm. Mm, okay, so what is the text about? Well, it's about how your brain is uh, self-cleaning. Mm, self-cleaning, huh? Yeah. So the brain keeps changing, huh? It does. It, mm -hmm. it removes unnecessary information mm -hmm. and adds necessary information. Mm. So uh, the writer compares the brain with the closet, right? Yeah. Self-cleaning closet. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and the closet adds clothes, mm -hmm. sort of like uh, whatever your preferences are, what your mm -hmm. new information is. And also if is. you don't wear, you know, the clothes you don't wear, they will, uh, the brain will get rid of that, right? That's right. It, mm -hmm. it goes to the, to the garbage box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all, where does the sentence belong? That's a lot like what your brain can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, it's making the example of the closet mm -hmm. and then going back to the brain. Mm -hmm. I see. And so it goes from brain mm -hmm. to closet mm -hmm. to brain. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the sentence five talks about your brain assess the connections between brain shares to determine blah, blah, blah. If they've been used in a while. Mm -hmm. And we see that haven't been worn in a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, then. That's why number three is the answer, right? That's right. Okay, then. Shall we move on to the next one? Very, very good. Okay. Time for exercise two. Ooh. Ooh. And we have our wonderful PPT from... Kim Sam. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we have our answer here. It's also, again, number three. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Ready? Ready. Here we go. As a young man, I went on a recreational fossil hunt in the Badlands of Alberta, a famous dinosaur site in Canada. My friend and I wandered around the barren lands looking for dinosaur bones. After several unsuccessful hours, near giving up, we met a fellow bone hunter and inquired about his luck. He pointed to the ground beneath us, telling us that the stones we were standing on were actually bones of a rather common species of dinosaur, but that his interest lay in only rare samples. Stunned, 
We looked down at what we thought were merely common rocks, loosely embedded in the weathered soil. He reached down, grasped one of the loose stones, rolled it around in his fingers as he examined it, and said, This looks like part of a rib from an Edmontosaurus. Now that a clear idea of what to look for emerged, our hunting improved measurably. Mm. Fossil hunt. Is there such a thing in Canada? Yes. Uh, North America is very famous for dinosaur bones. There's mm. lots of areas where it's easy to find them. Oh yeah? You're from Canada. Have you been on that kind of, you know, hunt? I've never been to the province of Alberta, mm. but Edmonton mm -hmm. is a city in Alberta. Oh yeah? And so Edmontonosaurus. Mm -hmm. Oh. I see. And so many of the dinosaurs are named after these places. Mm, I see. And I believe the very famous dinosaur T. rex mm -hmm. lived in North America. So that's where you find T. rex bones, mm. Tyrannosaurus. Mm. Where is it? Throughout yeah. North America, oh, USA, North America. Canada. Mm. I see. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, interesting, huh? Yes. So what is the story about? Well, the story is about this fossil hunt. So they're mm -hmm. going on an uh, expedition, a, mm -hmm. a little trip to find dinosaur bones. That's right. And they didn't realize that they were walking on oh, dinosaur bones. Because they're not experts, right? That's mm -hmm. right. And it it's such a common dinosaur bone place mm -hmm. that you can reach down and pick them up. Mm -hmm. And then the someone, uh, his fellow, you know, the bone hunter actually helped them to find, you know, uh, the bones, eh? That's right. But he was looking for rare bones. Mm, that's right. Uh, there were millions of each species of dinosaur in North America. Mm, so see. there's that's why there's so many bones. Mm. But thanks to his help, he uh, they figured out, you know, uh, what to look for, eh? Huh? That's right. Mm -hmm. So where does the sentence belong? So it goes here in number three. Mm -hmm. And so he gives them information... Because he refers to what? Fellow bone hunter, right? That's right. The, mm -hmm. the pronoun can be a big clue. That's true. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he gives them inter uh, interesting information mm -hmm. that is stunning, shocking mm -hmm. to them. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. That's why number three is the answer. That's right. right? Very All good. All right, then. Let's move on to exercise three. Ooh. Ooh. All right, then. Click, click, click. Click, click, clickety, click. Click, click, mm -hmm. clickety-click. Oh, All right, fantastic. Then. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Uh, where? Oh, we're going to... Oh, it's number three again. Again. Whoa. Our beliefs about food affect not only the choices we make, but also our biology. Researchers at Yale University gave study participants two shakes... One was labeled a high-fat, 620-calorie indulgent shake. The other, a low-fat, 130-calorie sensa shake. In fact, the two shakes were identical. Yet, the participants' belief that one was an indulgence, heaven in a bottle, the label noted, while the other was a healthier choice, had powerful effects on their body's response to the shakes. Levels of ghrelin, a hormone that stimulates appetite, rose steeply in anticipation of drinking the indulgent shake and then fell sharply afterward, indicating that the drink was satisfying. With the sensible shake, ghrelin levels stayed relatively flat or rose only slightly in anticipation and they did not fall steeply afterward, indicating that the drink was not satisfying. The shake contents were the same, but participants' beliefs changed their appetite regulation hormones. Whoa. Mm, mm -hmm. Interesting, huh? Eh? Fascinating. Mm -hmm. So what is the story about? Uh, you are what you eat. You are what you eat. You know, what you <laughs> believe about the food affects your biology. Yeah. Kind of, right? mm -hmm. So... It was an experiment mm -hmm. where they 
uh, fooled mm -hmm. the subjects, the participants, mm -hmm. into thinking they were having different milkshakes, mm -hmm. but they were the same. Yeah, that, then it's not what you are, not what you eat. Well, in a way, because it's what you believe of yourself, mm -hmm. or you, what you believe you are eating. Mm -hmm. That's right. right. And so the hormone mm -hmm. changed when you thought you were getting a yummy, yummy, sugar, mm -hmm. delicious drink. Yeah. And but then, your hormones stayed the same when you thought you were eating the healthy shake. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's like um, what you believe about the food, you know. It's yes, important, okay? exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even though it's the same, you know, identical, you know, food, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, um, what's that called? It's shake. They had, uh, you know. A milkshake shake. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. It's the same, but one says one labeled 620 calorie right and the other one was 130 calories mm -hmm. and the they had different names even one was sensa shake the healthy mm -hmm. one sensible uh, so mm -hmm. boring yeah sounds terrible and the other one was labeled indulgent mm. uh, sort of uh something you shouldn't have mm -hmm. it's only a treat mm -hmm. and it actually was called heaven in a bottle Wow. Wow. Like looking at the lever, they're like, wow. And then the lever of the, what's that called? The ghrelin, you know, the hormone? The ghrelin hormone. Mm -hmm. It rose, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it in rose. anticipation, waiting for this yummy, yummy mm -hmm. treat, their body actually changed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They didn't even eat the food yet. Mm -hmm. They got ready to mm -hmm. be excited. Mm -hmm. And after drinking it, you know, like, oh, satisfying, you know, they think. It was satisfied. And then their level, their hormone level went down because they were like, oh, it's over. Mm, I see. Mm -hmm. But with the healthy drink they mm -hmm. thought was healthy, Sensei. their hormone mm -hmm. level stayed, stayed same. the same. Mm -hmm. There was no e additional excitement. It mm -hmm. was... Just okay. Mm, interesting, eh? Yeah, it's very yeah, interesting. Yeah. All right, then. Let's move on to exercise four. Four. Mm-hmm. Ta-da. ta, -da. ta -da. Ooh. Ooh. And click, 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 clickety, click. click. Wow. Okay, then. Here we go. Ready? I'm ready. Mm-hmm. We are looking at number four mm -hmm. in our puzzle. Up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, before the Industrial Revolution, formal education used to be a luxury reserved for specific classes of people. Families with high social standing would send their children to school, while children from families of lower status would learn what they needed at home or, more rarely, from tutors. In these cases, the children would be taught those things that the family needed. There was little need for the average person to learn anything but what it took to run their own homes. Whatever was needed could be produced at home or traded for with other families. In a post-industrial society, however, the average family can no longer be self-sufficient. This produces an environment where, for those who are a part of that society, the world can no longer be successfully navigated with nothing but primary abilities in one's arsenal. Rather, this industrialized world requires secondary knowledge, which is typically acquired in a formal educational setting like a school. Mm. Mm, mm -hmm. Also very interesting. It is, eh? Mm -hmm. So what is the story about? Well, it says in the past, mm -hmm. uh, the lower class people mm -hmm. only uh, learned, they were only educated in practical education, in mm -hmm. things that they could use in home or at the family business. Mm -hmm. But today, mm -hmm. every class of person needs to know more information because the family business cannot support everybody. Mm -hmm. That's right. Before, mm -hmm. like uh, before the industrialized revolution, they all had the you know the family had the, run the same business, right? The the next generation had the family business, right? Mm -hmm. So all they need is like uh, to run what their parents do, you know. Right. So you need to learn how to produce 
uh, the product they have mm -hmm. and how to mm -hmm. uh, do the finances for that. Mm -hmm. So they didn't need a secondary knowledge. Right. right? They wouldn't need ge they wouldn't need geography. They mm -hmm. wouldn't need uh, science mm -hmm. unless it was associated with the product. So maybe people in high class they only had a you know a secondary knowledge because they had a nothing else to do. You know. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that's why especially like in Europe, only the highly educated people knew the languages of science and medicine, like Latin language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they had lots of time, right? But usually common people, they were busy, you know, running their business, you know, the family business, right? So That's but right. after the, uh, but in the industrialized world, you know, they need a secondary knowledge, right? They cannot yeah. survive with only the primary ability, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And we often see this uh, these days with people changing their jobs mm -hmm, and yeah things and, are changing quickly you know yeah and they always have to keep learning new things like yeah. computer programs and mm -hmm. everything like that that's right mm -hmm. so number four the sentence belongs number four right yes the however can be a big clue right it mm -hmm. is a big clue yeah mm -hmm. because it's a however means that it's changing mm -hmm. uh, topics from a positive mm -hmm. to a negative or negative to a positive or an opposite that's right. So people number four, they talk about the in the uh, before the industrialized revolution, right? Yes. So how self-sufficient it was, right? That's the right. Family, mm -hmm. And then after four, it says they need more education. You know. That's right. Mm -hmm. And a good way to think of that is, in the past, people grew their own food. Mm -hmm. Today we self-sufficient. They're right? self-sufficient, mm -hmm. and so today we don't. So we need to do other things to get money to buy the food, mm -hmm. and that's just one element of our lifestyle today. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right, then let's move on to exercise five. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh. Click, click, click. Click, click, clickety mm -hmm. click. So, are you ready? I'm ready, and we are looking for number three. Mm-hmm. All right, then. Are you ready? Here I'm we ready. go. Norms make our interactions with others reasonably predictable. Americans expect that when, with, when they extend a hand to another person, that person will grasp it and a brief handshake will follow. They would be shocked if they held out their hand and the other person grabbed it and spit on it or wouldn't let go. In contrast, people in some societies commonly embrace or kiss each other's cheek as a form of greeting, even when involved in a formal business relationship. A hearty handshake in those societies may be interpreted as an insult. In Thailand, people greet each other by placing the palms of their hands together in front of their bodies and slightly bowing their heads. This greeting is governed by strict norms. Slight differences in the placement of one's hands reflect the social position of the other person. The higher the hands, the higher the position of the person being greeted. Norms like these make it easier to live with others in a relatively harmonious way. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Wow, interesting again. Hey? It is interesting. Mm -hmm. Every country has a different form of greeting. Mm -hmm. Norms, it's called. Eh? Yeah, mm -hmm. social different norms. norms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so first, you know, uh, because of norms, we can pre uh, expect people to behave in a certain ways, right? That's right. And mm -hmm. so I'm in Korea, and mm -hmm. so I bow mm -hmm. when I meet people. Mm -hmm. In America, how do they say hello? Uh, they used to shake hands mm -hmm. with COVID, maybe that's changing. Mm -hmm. um, but it comes from showing you are a peaceful person to show your open hand. Mm -hmm. And countries like uh, France, you know, they kiss, you know, on the cheek, right? Yes, in, mm -hmm. in several European countries, they will actually hug mm -hmm. and kiss on the cheek one time or two times. Mm -hmm each cheek, mm -hmm. depending on the country. Mm -hmm. And the uh, sentence in a box, it talks about Thailand, right? That's so in right. Thailand, when they greet, they do it like this. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I wonder mm -hmm. if that's because they're, they're a very Buddhist culture, mm -hmm. and that might have something to do with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it says the higher the hands are, mm -hmm. the more respect 
Mm -hmm. They're giving to the person be being greeted. That's right. So when students bow to teachers, they have to do like this. But when I bow to students, maybe like this. Right. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Eh? Yeah. So the sentence belongs to number three, right? That's Why? right. Well, we're looking at mm -hmm. uh, this introducing Thailand, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so this greeting, mm -hmm. so it's specific. That's right. And then it goes to Stick placement of on. one's hands. Mm -hmm. And so we know that this has been introduced already before this mm -hmm. sentence. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. That's why number three is the answer. Very We're good. We're going to move on to exercise six. Very good. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, then. Click, clickety. Mm-hmm. And we are looking at number four for our puzzle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. Harvard's Nicholas Christakis says that when you take a bird's eye view of humans through the prism of social networks, the picture of both the individual and the group changes. He draws the analogy with graphite and diamond. Both materials are made of carbon atoms, but it is the way these individual atoms are connected that determines why one material is soft and dark and the other is hard and clear. The layered lattice arrangement of graphite carbon atoms means that it shears easily, whereas the highly interconnected arrangement of diamond carbon atoms means that it is as hard as well, diamonds, of course. Therefore, when it comes to carbon atoms, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Similarly, understanding the individual self only really makes sense in terms of the groups to which they are connected. To extend the carbon metaphor, when we are well connected, we are more resilient because there is a safety and strength in numbers. Alone, we are more vulnerable and weaker. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what is the story about? Well, it's talking about how our social connection mm -hmm. is similar to a diamond. Mm. And the atoms within a diamond compared to another carbon graphite material, mm -hmm. uh, the, the arrangement of a diamond makes it hard and strong. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have the expression, which they say here, you know, as hard as a diamond, mm -hmm. because you can't break a diamond easily. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, even though the same materials, you know, the, can be different depending on where they belong, you know, how the way they are connected. That's right. And so our social connections mm -hmm. are being made a simile, a, a comparison here, mm -hmm. that the closer our social connections, mm -hmm. the stronger and safer we are, mm -hmm. much like a diamond. Mm -hmm. So you can be different depending on where you belong. Uh, it can be different depending on how close your social connections oh, are. Mm -hmm. So if you're a loner, mm -hmm. um, you have a, a weaker status. Mm -hmm. um, you're not as safe because people mm -hmm. maybe aren't checking on you, mm -hmm. right? See. So it might be days before people discover that you're in trouble. Mm, I see. So graphite and diamonds, even though they have the same ingredients, you know, materials, right? What's that called? Carbon atoms, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the... Um, Graf graphite, graphite. Mm -hmm. They were connected loosely, maybe. So and so they break easy, easily. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it uh, fractures. Is it what mm -hmm. they say? Uh, both materials are made of carbon atoms, but it's the way these individual atoms are connected. Mm -hmm. uh, hard and clear. Layered lattice of graphic carbon means that it, it oh it shears, shears easily. easily. Breaks easily, so, that means, right? Yes, mm -hmm. fractures mm -hmm. or shears easily. Graphite is actually material for pencils, aren't they? That's right, I mm -hmm. believe so, yeah, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. it's That's a, why you can write it, right? Because it breaks. Yes, I'm sure we've all had mm -hmm. pencils break on us. We're mm -hmm. like, oh no! Mm -hmm. And diamonds, even though it's the same material, uh, they are connected tightly, maybe? So it's yes, really strong? Yes, exactly. Mm, I see. And so there's, and then we have this great other expression they use here, safety 
in numbers or strength mm -hmm. in numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see. So the sentence in the box talks about what similarly, you know, understanding the individual. So, so it's it's making a uh, comparison, mm -hmm. a close relationship mm -hmm. between how diamonds are the same as our close connected relationships. Mm, I see. So from sentence seven, the last one, right? Uh, no, not the last one. The after number four, mm. it talks about how we are connected, right? That's right. So uh, that's why it belongs before number four. It talks about diamonds and graphite. graphite. That's right. That's right. I mm -hmm. see. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Then let's move on to exercise seven. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. So we're going to clickety click. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the last one here, number five for mm -hmm. our puzzle entry. Mm -hmm. So are you ready? I am. Okay, then here we go. Just as people do not stand idly by and let random situations happen to them, so social situations do not let every person enter them. The choice between West Point and Berkeley is only available to students who performed well in high school and on college entrance exams. For many situations, a person needs, a cer needs certain characteristics to enter. The high school freshman who is taller than average may be recruited for basketball training, for example, whereas a friend who is better than average at mathematics and sciences may be recruited for honors classes. And small initial differences between people may get even larger as situations, such as basketball training sessions and honors classes, exaggerate them. At the end of their senior year, the differences between the students are likely to be much greater than they were originally. Thus, situation and person mutually shape and choose one another in a continuing cycle. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is the story about? Well, it's saying that your early interest or success in a certain field mm -hmm. will get you placed into situations mm -hmm. that further increase interest mm -hmm. and success in that field. Mm -hmm. And so even though students in it that are freshmen mm -hmm. might be very similar, mm -hmm. by the time they graduate high school, mm -hmm. They're very different because they've already been picked mm -hmm. to to be successful in certain fields. But uh, you can you can choose the, you know that that kind of situation. But the situation cannot choose everybody, right? Mm. You have to have a certain characteristics or you know like abilities, you know, to get into that kind of you know situation. That's think, right. You know, That's so they right. uh, West Point and Berkeley. What kind of school is that? Must well, be hard to get into, huh? Yes. Well, West Point mm -hmm. is the. Uh, top military university well, of america mm. it is the officer training university mm. it's uh very respected mm -hmm. what about berkeley berkeley is also a very respected university but it's a liberal university so it's all about mm -hmm. um it's not about the maths and sciences it's more about the social sciences mm, i see so even though you want to get into that kind of you know schools um mm -hmm. not every not everybody can get into it, right? Because your ability is also important, right? That's right. So at the end, you know, maybe before you get into the university, you and your friend may be similar ability, but after you graduate from those universities, your ability might be much bigger. Hey? That's right. Much mm -hmm. greater. Much greater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the sentence, where does it belong? At the end, because it talks about you're being a freshman, and mm -hmm. now it says you're a senior. Yeah, the sentence five says small initial differences, right? Mm. But the sentence in the box says, you know, the differences uh, are likely to be much greater, right? And that's mm. our other clue, yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Okay, so that's why number five is the answer. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to the next one. Excellent. Should I save Gray, who's mm -hmm. crying? All right. No, we can finish this one first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's click, click, clickety click. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great. Just to wait a little bit. 
The Romans used many highly flavored herbs and spices, and it seems that they liked their food to have a highly complex and strong taste. One of the reasons for this might involve, but not overcome, a food safety issue. The Romans used lead to line many of their cooking and storage vessels. A lot of their food was quite acid and therefore dissolved the lead. It is clear from studies on Roman bones that they had a high body burden of lead, and indeed many of them must have been suffering from chronic lead poisoning. One of the symptoms of lead poisoning is altered taste, often with a metallic taste in the mouth. Perhaps they tried to disguise the metallic taste with strong herbs and spices, or perhaps their sense of taste was so poor due to lead poisoning that the only way that they could taste anything was to make it incredibly highly flavored. Their desire for highly spiced food, for whatever reason, had a good knock-on effect. Many herbs and spices contain antibacterial chemicals, and so their inclusion at high concentrations in Roman food probably reduced pathogen levels. Mmm. Mm -hmm. So what's that about? Well, it turns out that uh, Romans were poisoning themselves because they had lead in the material they cooked with, mm -hmm. uh, the pots and pans. Mm -hmm. but, they lined you know, the vessels with the lead. Eh? That's right. Mm -hmm. But one of the problems of lead poisoning is a reduction in your taste. Mm -hmm. And so to make things more flavorful, they added more spices. Mm -hmm. And that actually helped cure their lead poisoning mm. because it was an antibacterial in these mm. spices and herbs. Interesting, hey? It's yeah. very interesting. Mm -hmm. Since, uh, you know, uh, by accident, right, they had a, uh, they ate, I guess, you know, lead a lot, hey? Because mm. uh, they used a lot of acid, you know, acid, acid deserved, you know, the lead, right? Mm. In the vessel. So they kind of suffered from lead poisoning and and also they taste you know that they had a you know metal metallic taste in their mouth yes so but to get rid of that you know mm -hmm. they cannot really taste it so they used lots of herbs and spices mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. but it was good for them right so lots of herbs and spices you know yes and it reduced mm -hmm. the chances of lead poisoning mm -hmm. oh great hey eh? mm -hmm. so the sentence seven where does it belong so we have it here at number four mm -hmm. and it's uh reasoning mm -hmm. right and a good clue here is highly mm -hmm. okay so mm -hmm. uh it's in both here incredibly highly flavored mm -hmm. That's and right. then their desire for highly spiced mm -hmm. and also sentence before four number four it has it talks about a metallic taste right mm -hmm. the sentence in the box talks about to disguise the metallic taste you know the metallic taste right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very okay. good mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. oh, the sentence second one, one of the reasons for this might involve but not overcome a food safety issue. What does that mean? Just out of curiosity. Well, it's because mm -hmm. they're not sure why they were adding all these herbs and spices. Mm -hmm. Maybe they did know mm -hmm. the problem mm -hmm. and it was to solve the problem of lead poisoning. Mm -hmm. And so overcome. Mm. But it so it overcome. didn't. It didn't fix it entirely. Mm. Let's move on to chapter fifteen. Very good. All right. And what is chapter fifteen about? Mm. In chapter fifteen, uh, we need to summarize the text. Oh. But there is a summarized sentence under the text. So we just, uh, you know, but there are blanks, right? Two blanks. So we just need to fill in the blanks with the proper words. Oh, good. So we'll read the text mm -hmm. and then we'll have a, a sentence summary underneath that mm -hmm. we read and then yeah. we fill in the blanks. Exactly. Fantastic. Okay, then let's move on to exercise one. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so here's our vocabulary. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> The impact of climate change on animals and plants interacts with habitat loss and fragmentation. 
This is because the main effect of climate change is to shift the area of where one species can live successfully. In a warming world, this habitable space moves either polewards across the landscape to the north or south, or up in elevation, with species living higher up mountains than ever before. This happens because the area where the main or the mean temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, for example, shifts in these directions under global warming. Survival then depends on whether a particular species can move, and if so, whether there's a suitable pathway for the movements to happen. Neither of these things can be assumed, and where habitats become too fragmented, a suitable pathway for organisms to move to other areas becomes less of a realistic possibility. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, click, 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 please. Click, click, clickety. Mm -hmm. oh. So, what is the story about? Well, our story is about because of climate change, mm -hmm. animals and plants need to shift their location mm -hmm. to areas that are better for their uh, lifestyle. Mm, but there are problems, right? Some animals can move and sometimes there is a pathway, but sometimes there isn't any pathway. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they have to move either north or south. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes they have to move up a mm -hmm. mountain. Mm -hmm. But if there's no way for them, if there's a barrier mm -hmm. going north or south or up, mm -hmm. then they cannot move. Mm -hmm. and and we cannot assume, it says, mm -hmm. we cannot assume that they can. We can't uh, take it for granted. Oh, yeah. So it's a sentence six, right? Neither of these things can be assumed. One more time. What does that mean? It can't be taken for granted. We can't take it as it's going to happen that they will move because maybe they can't. Because mm -hmm. there are possibility the animals cannot move, right? Some animals, you know, they don't have any legs. They cannot move around, right? Sure. But it's also maybe the the uh the temperature has changed and they want to move mm -hmm. but there's a border like mm -hmm. there's no pathways maybe it's a sea mm -hmm. or ocean and mm -hmm. they can't go any further mm -hmm. so either they can move or if there is a suitable pathway you know we cannot take them for granted right? that's right mm -hmm. i see so let's read the summarize the sentence then so when a species' habitable space is shifted under the effect of climate change, survival depends on the mobility mm -hmm. of the species and the availability of a route to new areas, the latter of which decreases where habitats become too fragmented. Mm -hmm. So mobility means whether they can move or not, right? That's mm -hmm. right. And the second one is? decreases is goes down or less opportunity mm -hmm. the letter of which that refers to the abil uh, availability of the route right mm. the suitable pathways right that's right decreases when the uh, habitats become too fragmented right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay that's it hey? very good mm -hmm. all right then let's move on to exercise two Ooh. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, let's move this up here mm -hmm. and get our vocabulary. Click, clickety. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you ready? I am. Here we go. If you have an activity where the results are nearly all skill, you don't need a large sample to draw reasonable conclusions. A world-class sprinter will beat an amateur every time, and it doesn't take a long time to figure that out. But... As you move toward the luck side on the skill luck continuum, you need an ever larger sample to understand the contributions of skill, the causal factors, and luck. In a game of poker, a lucky amateur may beat a pro in a few hands, but the pro's edge would become clear as they played more hands. If finding skill is like finding gold, the skill side of the continuum is like walking into Fort Knox, where the U.S. gold reserves are housed. The gold is right there for you to see. The luck side of the continuum is similar to the tedious work of panning for gold in the American River in California. 
you have to do a lot of sifting if you want to find the nuggets of gold. Mmm. Mm. All right. So click, click, click. So what is the mm. story about? The story mm -hmm. is. Let me get us size so we can see the mm -hmm. answer. Here we go. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Okay, the story is about skill versus luck. Mm -hmm. And the idea that uh, if something only takes skill, it's very easy to know who the best is. Mm -hmm. But if there's any amount of luck involved in the activity, mm -hmm. it might take a little longer, but eventually mm -hmm. you'll know who the lucky ones are and who the skilled people are. Mm. So to find it out, you know, in an event, that these skills, it's obvious, right? The experts are always better, you know? Mm. In a sprint game, like a running, you know? The world-class sprinter is always can beat you, right? And beat mm -hmm. us, you know? Every but, time. Mm -hmm. But in a game of a poker, you need a luck, right? Sometimes, you know, a lot of times. Well, so. yeah, it says that sometimes luck will beat skill. Mm-hmm. So in that kind of, you know, in a game of poker, uh, you need a bigger sample, right? A larger right. sample, you know? That's right. If you only play one hand of poker mm -hmm. and the person who wins mm -hmm. if you say oh they're the best mm -hmm. that might not be correct because mm -hmm. they might have been lucky but exactly. if you play 10 hands of poker mm -hmm. you can see who wins the most often mm -hmm. and that's probably the skillful person I see so extensive sample size or larger sample size right that's mm -hmm. right in that case so can you read that uh, summarize the sentence sure here we mm -hmm. go when we try to understand the outcomes of an event on the skill versus luck continuum, a more extensive sample size is required for a, events on the luck side since the outcomes are less predictable. Mm -hmm. mm. That's right. So in the game of the poker, again, it's uh, less predictable hey? who's going to win, you know, so... Yes, because there is an element of chance. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can win, right? <laughs> on yeah. my first try. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, then. Let's move on to exercise three. Very good. Mm -hmm. Ooh. 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 My. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. right, then. Vocabulary. Vocabulary. Mm -hmm. A paradox of human culture is that many of the technological and biomedical breakthroughs that revolutionized how and how long we live have been strongly opposed at their inception. This is true not only of those who may not understand the science behind each breakthrough, but of scientists, a fact alluded by the physicist Max Planck, a new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing its opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents eventually die and a new generation grows up that is familiar with it. Most of us are alive today only because we have benefited from the innumerous advances in public health and medicine over the last century, from vaccines and antibiotics to modern surgical techniques and cancer therapies. Yet most transformative biomedical advances have met with significant resistance from vaccines to organ transplants and in vitro fertilization. And today the same holds true for stem cell research. Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. Interesting, hey? Very interesting. So what is the text about? Well the text is talking about mm -hmm. how, oh my, mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. The text is talking about how uh, we benefit from advances in science and medicine, mm -hmm. but that each advance was actually first met mm -hmm. with opposition. People mm -hmm. didn't like it. At the beginning, uh, people do not like the new ideas, right? That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. It takes time to get used to the new ideas, right? Mm -hmm. And eventually it will be accepted, right? But it says... It's frequently only accepted once the older generation that opposes it dies. Because mm -hmm. new generations, they heard about it uh, when they were young, right? So they're mm. so used to the idea. Yeah. So they were accepted. And, and uh, 
a good i uh, you know a good example is stem cell research is mm, right now people are opposed you know yeah they think it's we have the expression playing god that mm. you're 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 controlling human mm. evolution mm. uh but the younger generation sees how the benefits of stem cell research mm -hmm. can really help uh people in medical emergencies and mm -hmm. with very severe defects or uh, medical issues. Mm. So after we die, maybe it will be used a lot, eh? It might be, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what they're saying happened yeah, historically. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's read the, uh, summarize the sentence, please. Technological and biomedical advances, when introduced initially, have encountered strong opposition mm -hmm. not only from lay people but even from scientists but they've eventually been accepted as the generational shift of a society takes place mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's not just the lay people like us right common people even mm -hmm. scientists they don't like the idea new ideas eh? sure mm -hmm. i mean everybody is sort of locked into a routine mm -hmm. right both in their career and in mm -hmm. their lifestyle mm -hmm. and new things uh, are challenging yeah it takes time you know to mm -hmm. get used to the new idea all sure. right so let's move on to the last one exercise four here we go mm -hmm. okay we'll move our features there mm -hmm. we go mm -hmm. here's our vocabulary mm -hmm. finding themselves Extis existentially homeless in the real world, many have found the experience of community online, especially in the form of social networks. The influence of online communities has drastically increased with the ubiquity of digital connectivity afforded by smartphones. The logic of modern technology drives addiction to digital distraction such that our immediate concerns are often ignored for the sake of minor matters that are magnified in importance. A state of semi-distractedness seems to permeate most of our existence within the digital 21st century. True individual character is vanishing because we are expected to flexibly redefine ourselves to consistently changing conditions. Mediated and representational existence contributes to the perceived flatness of reality by creating a numbness in the soul, which makes it difficult to perceive the differences of quality and gravitas between experiences. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So what is the story about? Well, this story is about how uh, social media mm -hmm and our experience of online communities mm -hmm. has made us sort of less of a person mm -hmm. mm. because we were so involved in online community right mm. so we don't get to see the real pro real world problems you know so you kind of ignore your problem in real world right and yeah. so you lose your identity, you know, because you refine yourself in, in a new way. And also you don't see the world the way it is, right? That's right. Mm -hmm. You uh, you sort of match your personality to what's expected to you online. Mm, yeah. Mm. So let's read that. Summarize the sentence. Absorbed in online communities, people are liable to dismiss their real world problems and lose their individuality as well as fail to recognize reality as it is. Mm -hmm. The problems, mm. right, when we are so involved in online communities, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, then. That's all for today, right? Mm -hmm. See you soon. Take care. Take care.